Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is a pretty gloomy day. It's raining, it's dark out, so I figure it's a good day to make me do something outside where I have to be in this weather. So behind me is the Plymouth, and we're gonna be doing a little something under the hood of it. Now as you know, I like my cars to be stock. As stock as possible is better for me. And this is the stock 318. This is the original engine from the car. And if you peek over there, that's a point type distributor. Now it's not the original distributor, it's one I got from O'Reilly's. And the one that was in it was also an aftermarket one, which isn't a big issue, it's a stock type. The issue I have is points. I have problems with points. The bug in its mess has points. And it's actually a fully rebuilt distributor that I got from Sparksworks. It's beautiful. Never had an issue. This is my parts store distributor, which also doesn't have an issue, but the points are the issue because as cars become more electric, more electric ignition, quality of parts like this, ballast resistors and points are gonna fall. And so when I get these points here at O'Reilly's for $7, they last like a week and a half. The rubbing block disintegrates or they're burnt. So we're gonna change that today. This is what we're gonna fix it with. This is a Petronix Igniter 1 that I got on Amazon. I think it was like $89. From what I could find, the parts stores could order them too. I just chose Amazon because it was the quickest. Um, Craig has a Petronix in his 75 bug, the green one. He says he loves it. Everything I can find, everyone loves their Petronix. So I figure for $89 to save the hassle of changing points because changing points in that car sucks. I don't know what Chrysler was thinking. And they said, let's put the distributor as close to the firewall as we can because then when they have to change points, they'll have to lie on top of the engine. But anyway, we me put you up on a stand. We'll pop this box open and see what's inside. So let's pop open the box of this Petronix igniter. Now this one for the Chrysler 8 cylinder is part number 1381A. And this is actually made in the US and it's got a 30 month warranty. Don't know what that involves, but everything's just loose in here. So we've got a rotor with, looks like magnets or something on it. I don't know if I'm supposed to take that tape off, so I'm gonna read the instructions. We got a rotor. We got a bag of stuff. Looks like we've got a piece of black plastic, some terminal ends, some other stuff. This is the whole unit right here. I have no clue how this works. This is the cool thing. This is literally, this all goes inside the distributor. The only thing that's not going to look stock is there's two wires coming out instead of one. And if you're really concerned about it, I figure you can wrap it in heat shrink and it'll look like one. And then at the end, you just split it at the end. This is an extra, this is the plate that goes on the distributor. And these are instructions. So let me read these real quick and we'll go from there. Good thing we read the instructions. Magnet sleeve, do not remove tape. All right guys, so here's my distributor. Like I said, this is one from O'Reilly's. What we're gonna do, pull some stuff apart. We're gonna take all this out. Okay, so now we're here, we're at this point. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get a cloth. We're gonna clean it a, a, a quick bit. I figure the idea is they don't want the oil or grease from normal points getting all up in their fancy points. AKA their electric ignition. That ought to be good. So now, we're gonna install the lower adapter plate, that one, using the screw they provide in this bag. Now they've provided two screws, 832nd flathead screw. 
Very good that they distinguished that because there's a Phillips and a flathead screw. So I was noticing that the igniter wasn't sitting on the uh, plate very well. It's The instructions say to use the flathead screw, which is a very tall head. But they've also included a Phillips head with a uh, it's countersunk. And that one fits perfectly and it's flush. So I don't know if the instructions are incorrect. I would doubt it. But they definitely do not... Yeah, that's definitely what I want. As you can see it. Yeah. So, use the uh, Phillips head one. And now we can set our adjustment. Well, I'm assuming it's going to go on this side. Like so. It goes on this side. That makes it a lot easier. I'm just stupid. So, now you've done that. We're gonna take this, we're gonna install this, or so we thought. There we go, we're gonna do that. And we're gonna install the nut they provided. I'm just gonna carefully pour that out on the table. Now they provided a nut here. I'm trying to show you, but it's a little hard. It's got a locking washer attached to it. it goes there, and it says do not tighten it. That's because even though this is electronic, there is still a gap you have to set. So we're just gonna go hand tight. And a little loose, because I put it on a little tight. Now we're gonna take the rotor. Make sure you grab the rotor. Put the green one in, not your old rotor. And we're gonna place it here. It says it can be a tight fit. Just make sure it's on all the way. So there is a gap you have to set. That is the gap between the fancy new rotor and your fancy new ignition thing. So, as I was saying before, they include a uh, little teeny feeler gauge. It's this piece of plastic here. Now this is a 30 thousandths of an inch piece of plastic. And they say if you don't want to use this, you can use a steel feeler gauge, but I don't know why you would since they've included this. And all I'm going to do is that. I don't know if you can see, I've just inserted the plastic right there between the unit. We're going to take the wrench and socket, tighten it down. Very good. So what we're going to do, we're going to take these wires here, go around, Feed the wires through the hole here. Pull the wires through. Push this through. Good. And now they've included a very nice little wire holder. Take the two wires and you put them this where the condenser would normally be. And that should be that. We just have to make sure they don't contact anything moving, which they don't. So here we are in the car. Distributor is installed as any other distributor would. You can see I have my red wire going to the coil and the black wire to the coil. Red wire obviously is positive. Now there's differing opinions on this, whether you want the red wire going before the ballast resistor or after it. Um, it's a big d debate. So I guess we're gonna try it this way and see what happens. Let's see, it does say you can I shorten the wires. It says if you need to lengthen them, they have a kit or you can use 20 gauge. All right, so we're in the car. Seems fine. That's a beautiful idol. So much easier than points. Alright guys, so I'm really happy with how this turned out. The Bertronic system was super easy to install. I mean, as long as you make sure that the distributor goes back in the same way it came out, no problems can be had. Just this one, I hooked it up to the coil. Like I said, it started fine. So I don't think that's going to be an issue. It's super easy. If the Volkswagen ever, if the points, you know, I ever have an issue with that again, it's getting a Bertronics.
I mean, $89 to not have to readjust points, not have hassles, not have points burning out, not have a condenser failing. Totally worth it in my opinion. Anything to save me from having to do ridiculous amounts of hassle and work, worth it. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like. And if you're new around here, subscribe. Because I got a lot of stuff going on. I got this car. I got that car. The bus is in the backyard. The Dodge truck over at the shop. So we got something for everyone. If you like trucks, if you like Volkswagens, if you like large American Chryslers and anything, you know, I've got it. So, like I said, I hope you do enjoy this video. And I hope... If you're, if you found this looking to see if you wanted to get a Protronics, I hope it's, you know, helped your decision. I think totally worth it, totally worth the money to ditch the points. Some people will say, well, it had points in the factory and they didn't have issues then. And yes, this car did have points in the factory, but you have to imagine and remember that in 1969 it had points. I don't know the exact year, maybe 75, they went to electronic ignition points work this is much nicer so thank you guys so much for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one until then goodbye oh also check this out so my siren has always worked but my radio i just got that working too so now on the green light comes on if i press the button the red light comes on pretty cool